We have with us uh, Gene Cheshire. Hi there. Nice to meet you. And Indeed. Mike Melson. Correct. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. So how's the show going for you guys? Excellent. It's, it's good been energy. fantastic. So Caringo's in the object store business. That's correct. And uh, and you're, what's the what's the heritage of the company? Just give us a little background. Sure, sure. Well, Caringo is founded by three gentlemen who have a tremendous legacy in the startup business. Uh, uh, Mark Gar- Goros, uh, Jonathan yep. Ring, and Paul Carpentier. Yep. The, their names make up the name Caringo. Uh, Paul Carpentier, in particular, is the f- uh, the father of Kaz. He invented what became the Centera product. Right, right. And I so, knew that there was. I knew yes. that there was an EM uh, a Centera relation. There, yeah. there very much right. is. Right. So, uh, he ended up taking uh, the, the things that he wished he had perhaps done differently and uh, went with 2.0, if you will, and. Uh, uh, parlayed that into the object storage server right. that, that is so one of, yeah so one of the things I'm, I'm interested in is uh-huh. what were the things that they learned in generation one uh, sure. to, to sort of impact uh, generation two CAS sure. products sure uh, one of the things of course with Centera the original uh, addressing scheme was based on the MD5 hash of the content right. when MD5 became a cracked algorithm, then that became unsecure. And it was no longer something that held up in in court of law for a compliance key. Uh, You could no longer prove that the content was immutable. They've had to deal with that. So he separated out the address from the ability to prove forever that the content was truly never changed. So that was was one thing. The other was dealing with uh, small files. Sintera yeah. has a history of perhaps not being real speedy with the smaller files, so he fixed that with and I, and I, I think product. the way Sintera works, correct me if I'm wrong, you, in order to deal with billions of small files, what they would do then is sort of aggregate groups of files and then deal with them as a single object. Is that right? Yeah, and they keep the index for, for the metadata actually in their access nodes in the server so that it's not really stored with the object. So with the, with the DX in Dell's implementation of Coringo, they, uh, we actually store the metadata with the object physically down on the disk. Okay, and Gene, you're with Dell. I'm with Dell. And your title is? I'm a storage strategist. I work in our PG product development group and in our advanced engineering. So we were working with the DX product in Coringo before it was released in the early stages of bringing on integration partners and, and kind of bringing the solution to, to market. Okay. Uh, yeah. and, and Mike, were you with Coringo from the beginning? No, I was uh, probably about employee 20. I've been there three and a half years now. Okay. Uh, and the relationship with Dell uh, mm-hmm. started when? Well, our advanced engineering group effectively went out and, and tried to analyze what are the options for this, this type of object storage. We wanted an object storage platform to have a, a, an archive, so it's part of our longer term intelligent data management strategy. So mm-hmm. it ties in with uh, uh, the other acquisitions that we've, we've had recently with Compellent because of their tiering of storage, Ocarina right. because of their compression and dedupe, and Exanet because of the file system. So one of those components of a, of a complete family of intelligent data management product was to have this intelligent active archive and primarily the, the HTTP RESTful interface and the ability to scale to millions of objects. So it was a platform. And we just simply looked at the way Coringo had done it compared to everybody else and said, this is this is what we want. This is effectively the, the way we wanted to implement the technology. So we've become extremely close technology yes, we partners. We're, we really worked a lot deeply together. Okay. And you've got a specific device that you ship, right? Uh, uh, but you're also looking, are you looking longer term to embed the functionality into uh, into all of the platform, across all the platforms, or is it going to stay as a separate appliance? All of the above is the proper answer. Okay. Uh, most everything will come to market initially as individual appliances. The archive store, the compression engine, the, the Exonet file head, each of those things will come there. But eventually it's very logical to see uh, the the compression things of Ocarina in, a, in an Equalogic controller to see the file systems and things get more integrated as you go forward. But it's a, it's about collecting the proper intellectual property and applying the right thing at the right place. And, yeah. uh, so there is a, a, a true architecture that Dell is investing in that they call, uh, our new term for it is fluid data architecture. Right. Now that we've uh, got the, the compellent in the family, but it was, a, it was an intelligent data management fabric so that we have the proper relationship of a, 
of a data mover, of a deduplication engine, of workload managers and so forth, so that we break the way that data should be handled down into the smaller components and then apply the technologies to move it more efficiently to where it, where it needs to be. So it's a, it's a long road. Uh, and obviously object store is really important in sort of medical records. It's uh, it's it's important in a in a, across all industries in the context of legal and regulatory compliance. Right. Legal and regu regulatory compliance anywhere where there's really fixed content. Karinga was built, uh, Castor, which is the software inside the DX, from the ground up to manage fixed content. Yeah. So yes, medical images, uh, video, audio, uh, any of those types of things. We're seeing that in media and entertainment, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Feature length vi uh, movies now, 12 terabytes of data, 350,000 files. A feature length movies, only 12 terabytes only. post rendering. <laughs> no, that's the HD RAW that you mm -hmm. see in the theaters, 350,000 right. frames. Yeah. Right. After yeah. it's rendered, right. it's right. ready for broadcast, Correct. right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Pre rendering, it's a lot bigger. Much, than that. much more oh, than yeah. that. So <laughs> the explosion of, of fixed content, if you will, because those frames, once they're shot, they're in the can, they stay, they will edit them and create new versions, new renderings. Right. Uh, but yes, medical imaging, uh, uh, satellite photos, uh, electronic discovery, you know, e-evidence, all of that is just creating tremendous growth of fixed content. And, and you know, I've talked to banks who said if you could solve the problem of, uh, I, don't know if, I don't remember if it was Bank of America or one of them, but the problem of, of storing um, you know, um, uh, tens to hundreds of billions of check images. Right. Correct, correct. Um, and so I could retrieve a single check image without having to retrieve a bundle of them, Right. then I'd buy the product today. So how deeply are you guys in that space? A lot. Uh, you know, the, the old traditional problems with checks, uh, uh, different types of bankings would have these millions of little 2K check mm -hmm. images, and they'd be right. laying them down. In is four, that how small they are? 2K? Yeah, as small as 2K. 2K. And yeah, then yeah. the smaller sector in a file system is like 4K, so you're wasting 50% right. of the space by right. putting it there. Right. So the way Coringa lays the software down on the DX, they lay the objects down end to end to end. And so there is right. there is no wasted space out there. And okay. it just You can literally, uh, we did a session earlier today where we really got down and did the comparison of traditional file systems versus a, an archive storage into look at the different efficiencies and right. and you get a when you put an object in an object store you get back a tag or a unique right. unit you get identifier it. and that's, right. that's the way that you find it so it's literally one step to go retrieve that and pull that object back and if you look at a at a file system with a raid five there's I don't know, what was there twelve thousand different pointers get right. hit to pull back one file compared to one so it's those right. those types of efficiencies if you're if you're gonna add ten storage nodes a month for seventy years you got to be sure that you're not wearing out those disk and that you've got a, a pattern of, of accessing that data that will last you through the years. And file formats and types and operating systems change, but we're a native HTTP, so HTTP is probably going to be there a so long that's, time. that's the access method. That's yes. the access HTTP. method, yeah. Okay. And, and is there a theoretical limit um, in terms of the number of objects? Well, mm -hmm. or, or current we can use a Class B ad network addressing scheme today, so we can logically get about 65,000 nodes, and we could store a 30 million items per node, depending on their size. So, yeah, so, it's a pretty big number. It's a, pretty, uh, yeah. it's a big number. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the storage capacity, as well as the namespacing to address that capacity, all of that is fully d distributed. It's a symmetrical architecture, so... It is hard to predict where that theoretical limit would be with the DX. As you add nodes to the system, it just keeps adding capacity. Is there an operation? Sometimes there's theoretical limits, and then there's the operational logistical limit. You know. Yeah, we like I say, we've looked at scaling. Uh, in a mid-release in uh, December, we went to support a Class B versus just Class C networks. But first, you didn't think anybody needed more than like 250 storage nodes. But if you can get to 65,000 storage nodes at, yeah. at two terabyte drives, 12 drives per system, you can get to about a, a one and a half uh, exabytes worth of data today. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But we haven't sold one that big yet, but we'd like to. Uh, we'd, be, we'd be pretty happy to find yeah. out what that limit is in reality. Uh, so. So, uh, medical image is big. What about in the area of social media? Because some of these social media platforms, they're sort of they're building their own. I think they're building a lot of their own technology, right? Are That's you correct. seeing opportunities for maybe the tier two ish kinds of applications? Maybe ones Absolutely. that exist in the cloud. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, the first place is uh, CDNs, content distribution networks. Okay. So. 
they have their network where they have a, a tremendous number of edge servers where they cache content as they deliver it, but all of that needs to come back to a, a set of origin servers. For the original content, right. make sure everything's the same. And so for that golden master, which they may want in two or three strategic geographies, mm -hmm. the DX is an absolutely outstanding platform mm -hmm. for that origin server. And those would be server. what kinds of files? Uh, they range in the CDN world everything from the, the 2K thumbnails for a social networking site to uh, full feature length videos that are streamed across the web. Netflix a customer? No, <laughs> we don't know. Okay, I don't know. It seems like they're soaking up a lot of traffic these yeah, days. So. They are. Well, anything that uh, is native HTTP, so so many things starting out with cameras and PDAs and everything, they're just in an HTML format picture. So, you know, it, uh, like one of the big wins for Coringo, I know a long time ago they talked about was like Vodafone in Europe. And, and they said, well, they're starting out with HTTP and they're putting it on a file system and they're going across a block system and they're replicating to another file system and then they're delivering HTTP on the back end. So if they could go HTTP end to end from the time you create data until you retrieve data, then you've simplified every time you go through another format you have an opportunity to corrupt data or to lose data so right. it's just a matter of, of having a a platform and for all practical purposes a DX just looks like a like a web server it's, yeah. it's HTTP 80 it's just there now it just scales and and it's very easy to manage you just plug in additional nodes and they boot up and join right. the cluster and it right. just, and so there's no there's no backup and restore when you run out of data. You don't have to, you know, do a forklift upgrade whenever you filled up a frame or something like that. And it, and it fits Dell's model. All of our storage products, we worked for them to be peer scalable. So that's the same way Equalogic. When you add more Equalogic, you get more controllers, more horsepower, more NIC ports, more drive. Yeah. DX does the same thing. Uh, the way that Exonet scales is the same way. The way Ocarina will scale will be the same way. So as you add more appliances, so to mm -hmm. speak, you will then grow that that power you know, as it goes forward. Your your biggest competitor probably is EMC in this space. Is that right? Or are there or or is it or is it somebody else? Well we like to think we don't have any competition. <laughs> of course uh, you know, like that. Thing. <laughs> but EMC Centera has gone into life and that was the probably platform. They have an Atmos out there today. Right. In both cases they're they're it's, it's a it's heavy lifting to basically do business with them. They have a very heavy API. You have to like totally rewrite your software to take advantage of it. Or we're really HTTP 1.1, and, and instead of a write, you do a put. And instead of a, a read, you do a get. It's just extremely simple to do that. And so the the porting is, is gives us another set of scale. There's a few others out there, but they're they're making it look like an object uh, uh, where they'll have a file system below, right. or they'll be keeping the index in a server instead of really down with the data. Right. So this is the purest right. application that we've seen in what we truly call a true object store. So you would say the wave of the future is accessed by HTTP. That's it absolutely it'll is. It'll be there for yeah. a long time. That was probably the, the last of the major differences that Paul Carpenter looked at mm -hmm. was uh, a protocol as the API, something that was industry standard out there right. that didn't need a big SDK, that you could actually point a web browser at the DX and pull your content out mm -hmm. if you happen to know the, the key. And uh, so it's being validated out there, of course, by some folks like Amazon with S3, you know, that HTTP mm -hmm. is the way to access cloud and object storage. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can think of it as a private cloud, but then there's just people are learning different use models. I mean, and it, it was originally thought of very much as being a second or a third tier of storage. But again, in medical, if you're reading 100 meg files, it's, it's primary storage to them. It's Absolutely. all they need primary. because yes. of that so you need type some, of application. You need some performance characteristics yeah. that are fairly significant. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Well, and that's why there are features such as what we call Darkhive, where you have perhaps petabytes of data, but most of it's long tail. It won't be accessed. Medical images right. will sit there. And you need those available. You don't know when the doctor's going to need that x-ray, but when he does, it's got to be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we'll fill up DX nodes and then power them down. Mm -hmm. And until the content is needed, those disks will stay spun down. You get 30% power savings mm -hmm. until you need the content, and then it's available almost instantly. 